What's up y'all? All right, it's time. I've been teasing that I would try some new Wet n Wild makeup and today is that day and I have already applied it. So we'll be kicking it back to past me from like 30 minutes ago, but my goodness, what the heck, Wet n Wild has some really, really good launches that have come out and a few that I kind of feel so-so about. We'll obviously get into all that. You will see all of these as I try them on. I'm so excited. I'll say this at the end of the video too, but I'm just saying there's so many new drugstore launches right now, which is why you've seen so many videos on my channel of me trying different brands at the drugstores, new launches because there's so much. Everyone's just going crazy in the spring. So I'm here for it. I hope you are enjoying all of these videos. If you wanna binge them, I have a playlist of like trying drugstore makeup videos. I will have below if you wanna watch more, but I don't really have anything else to say. Let's just dive into trying all of this new Wet n Wild makeup. Okay, so I have already put on like my morning skincare and my SPF because the first thing we're gonna try is a primer. So this is the new Wet n Wild Impossible Primer. And I, when I, <laughs> I'm smiling for a reason. <laughs> when I was talking about this in, I'm assuming it was like an anti wish wishlist video because I think I was talking about a bunch of new launches that I was thinking about getting. And this is one I was so intrigued by because of the description they have. Let me pull it up from their site. It says, why impossible? The first of its kind, silicone free primer turns imagination into innovation. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, mattifying and hydrating. Yes, and this is what made me giggle because it was just so weird. <laughs> I don't know. It said, and we'll say it one more time for the people in the back. This breakthrough silicone free formula features the silky seamless application traditionally achieved with silicones, but it helps to simultaneously mattify and moisturize your skin, blurs the appearance of pores, uh, gives a soft focus look. It has skin loving ingredients like gooseberry and jujube blossom extract, which is natural brightener. It's an amazing do-it-all primer. It was just that like, we're gonna say it louder for the people in the back. It's a phrase I hear all the time, but to read it in like a brand's description of a product made me giggle. I like it. In their how-to for this product, it says to apply this after your sunscreen, before your makeup. And while that may be obvious to some of us, there was a long time where I would really kind of struggle with figuring out the whole SPF primer, makeup, you know, the order of things. And so it was kind of helpful that it put that for anyone that's like, wait, so do I put the SPF on top of the primer? You know, how's it work? So this retails for $6.99. And my thing is the idea that this could mattify and hydrate is pretty cool. Sometimes I'm using a foundation that is maybe a lot a bit glowy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like some are just, a very glowy. I almost said a lot of it again. So here's what it looks like. It's this clear balm that kind of has the look of what a silicone primer would straight out of the bottle. Uh, and it has a slight velvety feel and it's gliding easily. It definitely has that soft feel that silicone traditionally has, but not quite as like velvety. It doesn't have quite as velvety of a feel. I don't know how matte that looks though. But what I'm getting back to what I was saying, sometimes a mattifying primer is really nice, even if like I don't have oily skin, but sometimes it is nice because then when you're pairing it with a super glowy foundation, they can pair well together. This, I don't feel like made my skin matte though. And so I can imagine I don't have oily skin as I said. So if you did, would this give you the mattification you so desire? I'm not so sure it would, I don't know. So it definitely gave me a kind of tacky feeling. So I feel like the hydrating portion of the claims of this are definitely true and it feels really nice. The cooling feeling has already gone away, but it feel, my skin feels good and I feel like it looks healthy. But I think if you're going for this for the mattifying claim, I, I think you will be disappointed. I also have to say, I really like the light pink packaging with the kind of holographic or whatever that is font. I think that's pretty. Okay. This is the PS de resistance. This is what I was the most, please don't make fun of the way I said that. This is the thing I'm the most excited to try. It is the Wet n Wild Tinted Hydrator. I have, <laughs> I have so many BB creams and tinted moisturizers that I've been playing with for the past few months. It's wild. I do, I am very partial to two different BB creams. I did a video on it like a week or two ago. I will link below. Those are my two favorites. They're both around $10. So this, the price is $5.99. So I'm gonna be very picky with this because I know that I can get something so incredible with similar claims for only a couple dollars more. Does that make sense? So the full title of this product is the Bare Focus Tinted Hydrator Tinted Skin Veil. Like I said, it's $5.99. I have two shades that I bought here. I have Fair and Light Medium. The only shade lighter than these two is Porcelain. 
and I actually originally was only gonna get one of them and I had light medium, but I got a message from one of you guys saying that they run a little bit deeper than you might think, especially for the fairer shades. So I ended up adding fair to my card as well and I'm glad I did because light medium is definitely too dark. But I wanna show you them both so you can kind of see. That is light medium. This is fair here. I'll have to reapply some primer here, but I'm gonna mix these because the light medium, as I kind of blended it down my neck, I don't know if you can see, but it really looks orange compared to my neck. The description of this is really nice because it says it's lightweight, it's a multi-purpose and convenient formula, it's hydrating because it has hyaluronic acid in it and vegan squalane, and that it gives sheer to medium coverage. So keeping in mind, if you put on a thin layer, it's probably gonna be pretty sheer, but supposedly we can build it up to medium. It's a semi-matte finish for all skin types, perfects with a silky smooth, non-greasy application. One of y'all sent this to me years ago, this little Mickey-shaped, like kind of mixing plate that you can put makeup on if you want, and it's so cute, and I just saw it in my drawer. I was kind of straightening up my makeup collection the other night, and it's, yeah, it's just so cute. I want to use it. So we're mixing these two. I feel like this would be a, sorry, going back to this really fast. I feel like this would be nice if you wake up really early and you get ready really early. This might be a nice, like, wake your skin up feeling product that you might really just enjoy, you know? You know, I should start on this side. Just see what it looks like just on one side first. Definitely feels like lightweight, you know, easy to spread around. It's not gloopy or thick or anything like that. And I'm just using my favorite sponge. I will link below. It's like $1.50 online. That mix is a nice shade match though. So at least I've got that. It's obviously I'd rather just use one shade, but it is what it is. Without it, I've got, you know, some freckles, a little bit of um, different colorations on my skin. And on this side, you can still see some of my freckles, but it just looks that much more perfected. So I would call this like a step above sheer. Let's try one more layer and see, since it says it's supposedly buildable. Obviously, if you use a brush, as I always say, you're gonna get a little bit more coverage. I just don't use brushes for this part of my makeup. I haven't in a while. Every once in a while I do, but it's certainly not my preferred method. So I don't think that that added a ton more coverage, but I do think my skin looks healthy, baby. Like. So I'm sitting here editing this and seeing that really this shade, I think I should have just used the fair shade alone because even in this lighting, you can see it doesn't quite match my neck and watching it back in editing, I see, I really think I should just go with the fair. So next time I try it, I will. If you were just curious shade wise, like if you're near me, maybe go for the fair. That's all. <laughs> I definitely think that ha this has that hydrating quality that I personally prefer in like tinted moisturizers and BB creams. It definitely can be built up to have some coverage. Medium coverage, it just depends on what you think medium coverage is for you. I think this is maybe slightly lower, but I'm talking slight, so that's just my own thing. But I really, really like the way my skin looks. Super youthful and healthy and glowy, and that's what, that's what I like. Now, on the other end of the spectrum when it comes to like coverage and stuff like that, I was not gonna buy this. And I mentioned that in the anti-haul video, but so many of you guys said no, Jessica. So many people are loving it, you have to try it. Like I wanna know what you think as well. And I was like, well, well, well. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so it's the Megalast Incognito Concealer. The reason I originally didn't want it is because it says it's all day full coverage concealer, and that's just not, again, I'm very much a medium coverage gal. Like, that's just the way I am. I also sometimes do enjoy full coverage depending on the thing, so I figured we would give it a try. I already love that the doe foot is A, kind of bendy, but also it's got that flat part to both sides. That is my favorite kind of applicator. I don't know why, man, but it just makes application so enjoyable, you know? Noki, what you doing? Our beagle's sitting in a sun patch. What are you doing, handsome boy? It's been sunny all week, and that is insanely incredible, and, oh, now he wants to leave, and uh, so we've been taking him on more walks, and it has been enjoyable for all of us, but especially him. He's like, whew, finally. I was just on my phone switching to pull up the concealer so I know the prices and stuff, and uh, I just saw one of the Wet n Wild sponges, and I'm curious, have any of you guys tried any of the sponges Wet n Wild sells? So this concealer is $4.99, says it gives all day wear and buildable matte medium to full coverage. It says it fully conceals imperfections without detection under sunlight or spotlight. 
That's a bold claim. <laughs> Reality is I've had a lot of good luck with some Wet n Wild face products over the years. Um, especially like their Photofocus Dewy Foundation is one of my favorite foundations of all time. And I just love that Wet n Wild has kept their price point so much lower, whereas a lot of other drugstore brands are going so much higher. So it says to do a full on triangle. I'm just gonna do that. <laughs> That's all. Especially if it's fuller coverage. I don't, I don't think I need that much covered up. This is this Sephora Milk Collection brush I've been using. I've had it for a while, but I hadn't used it. And it's meant for concealer. It's kind of small which I prefer a bigger concealer brush, but I know most people probably don't. They probably prefer a smaller one. Ooh, the shade match is not bad. Where it's like brightening, but it's not overly, overly brightening. Well, well, well. That looks really nice. So with and without, I always have a lot of darkness right in that corner. That is, for the most part, gone. It blended in nicely. It doesn't look super dry. I would say most likely the key with this, if you don't like crazy, crazy full coverage, is to apply about the amount I did because I, I can just tell if I'd applied a whole bunch more, like did the whole triangle. I know some of y'all like that and there's nothing wrong with that, but if you don't want full coverage, just don't apply that amount because you'll have a lot more product you're trying to move around in that area to try to get it to blend in, you know? I feel like this has a smell. Another thing I've been doing a lot lately is getting my concealer, whichever one I'm using, blended in first with a, with a brush and then going in with my finger to tap it in the rest of the way. I just feel like that helps so much with kind of almost soaking up with your finger the excess product that there is, but it still is not taking away all of the coverage. It's just soaking up a little bit. I am so glad you guys made me try this. I just feel like, again, my under eyes look healthy. They look brightened, but it's not so over the top. It's creasing a little bit, just literally into my little crepey lines, but I mean, every concealer I own does that. Sometimes concealers have a little bit more coverage will catch in weird ways and it'll, like any little bit of dryness you have or anything like that looks instantly weird when you blend it in. This did not do that. I am, I'm excited to keep playing with this. By the way, after five or 10 minutes, this tinted hydrator does still feel tacky. So I think I probably will set it down with some kind of powder. I was gonna put something in my brows, but honestly, I don't feel like they need it today, which is insane. But there is one clear brow product I do wanna try, did I just say product? From Wet n Wild, it's their Brow Sessive Brow Shaping Gel. I got the one in clear. They have two shades. There's brown, which is like a darker brown. I think they called it brown, and then blonde. So there's not a crazy shade range. I just went with the clear, just cause honestly, with products like this, I like the clear just to hold my brows in place if I have the extra time to do it. But it says it's got a teeny tiny brush. Yes, it does. It's not quite clear. It's kind of like white. That's odd. Feels a little more waxy than it does wet. I've been using the Anastasia brow gel, which is more expensive, but it's definitely clear and it's really wet going on, but it dries and boy, your brows do not move. This feels different. This feels waxy, so they might not be glued in place, but they're gonna stay in place and Maybe it doesn't look quite as obvious that you're wearing a brow gel. I don't know, let's just try it. Yeah, you can see like the, I just feel like I'm always gonna have to not brush out, but like kind of press out the extra bits of the white that just like sticks in your brow. So I'll just kind of press them down to get them down kind of more flat against my face, but also just to tap out any of the whiteness that was there. I mean, it is what it is. I think brow gels, you can find pretty decent ones at any price point. So my only complaint with this is just that it's that little bit of whiteness that I think if you had even darker brows, you would really have to like make sure the whiteness doesn't come through, but just tapping it got rid of it. So I think it's fine. What is it that I'm smelling right now? Hold on, I wanna make sure, does this concealer, I feel like the concealer has a slight smell. So I like it. I don't think this is anything that if I ever used it all up, I would need to go out and buy it again. But I also know that if I just needed a brow gel and I didn't wanna spend a ton of money, this is doing the job and it's like three bucks. Okay, another thing that I am very excited about, not quite the piece de resistance as the <laughs> tinted hydrator, this and this. These are the new Wet n Wild Color Icon eyeshadows. So they have, I think, four different 10 pan palettes that they're selling. I got the one in Nude Awakening because if you've ever watched my channel, you know I just like neutral shadows. That's just the way I am. This is just so pretty. It's got some mattes, it's got some shimmers, and I'm excited to dip into that. But they also re-released their Color Icon like smaller quads, although this is like a 
quint. But this used to be a trio in their line called Walking on Eggshells. Then it was a quad, and now it's one a five pan little palette here. And what I did notice as I was looking at these closely today is that the pans themselves are exactly the same size. You can either get ones with five or ones with 10, and obviously both of these lines have lots of different options. I also noticed that other than maybe this lightest shade here and there, none of these colors repeat. Now, are some of them really similar to others? Yes, but when you look at them literally side by side, none of the colors have an exact match in the other, so it's kind of like I have a 15 pan palette here. <laughs> and what's interesting is that the 10 pan palettes are $5.99, so six bucks. The five pan palettes are four, so if the pans are exactly the same size, you actually get more for your money with the 10 pan palette. So we need to swatch these and see how they perform and how they compare to each other because I've heard some mixed things about this new release, so I'm very curious. Still pretty so far, but not quite as buttery as I feel like a lot of other Wet n Wild shadows I've tried in the past. Whoa, this one here is this one here, and that is absolutely stunning. Like that, it, that one was the butteriness I expect. They have a nice deep brown and black in here as well. So they swatched just fine, and I just re-swatched some of the first ones I swatched, and I take back what I said, because they actually are nice and buttery. I feel like I had to get past that top little layer, and now it's like nice and creamy. Those are beautiful. The deep, dark colors are nice and deep and rich and pigmented too. Okay, I have no complaints about this one either. Look at those swatches. They were super smooth and creamy. So no duds in this one either. I'm excited to play with them. So, ooh, I'm a little torn on like which to put where, you know? And as I always mention in these kinds of like first impression style videos, I do speed reviews on my channel, which is like, once every month and a half, I will put up a video basically sharing my more finalized reviews on all of the products I've been trying in like first impression style videos. So you get to see like, okay, after I've tried them for a month or so, are they any good or not? So stay tuned for that, subscribe. I do those, like I said, every like month and a half on my channel. So I wanna start with this shade, the one that I said was just like so pretty from the Nude Awakening palette. And I just wanna tap it, oh, it's so pretty, on my lid and kind of blend it. This always kills me, like man, Wet n Wild and Elf, there's so many drugstore brands that are doing amazing things, especially with eyeshadow that you really, there really is no reason that you have to spend a ton of money on a high-end palette. Now, is it, are there still amazing high-end palettes? Of course, and I own some that I absolutely love, but you really don't have to. I mean, look at how pigmented and beautiful that is. So I'm gonna use this e.l.f. Fluffy Eye Blender brush. I've been using a lot this month and it's really nice. It's like a big eyeshadow brush, but it blends really quickly and it's super soft. Just kind of blend that into the crease. This is one of those shadows I can already tell that's like, it could be a one and done look. Blend it and then usually I'd tap like maybe more of this or a lighter shade on the center of the lid just to brighten it up again after I blended it. And then that's it. Cause this is blending so easily up into the crease. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna take this kind of more matte shade here, blend it a little bit into the crease. You don't need a lot. This one's pigmented too. So now I'm gonna go into that center shade here from the Walking on Eggshells. It's so pretty. Definitely gives a little bit more of like a pink icy effect than that first shade I used. So definitely a little bit of fallout over here, like teensy bits that even with a sponge, I can just kind of go boop, boop, boop and it's blended in. So both of those already loving, excited to play with those some more, but I think, Again, bang for your buck if you like neutrals. You might as well spend a couple dollars more and get even more shades. And there are so many similarities between the two. You certainly don't have to have both, but I'm really enjoying both. Now, Wet n Wild, if you're listening, I'm sure you're not, but if you are, when are you gonna release some singles like in these exact shapes? You know, you don't even have to change the manufacturing. Just take some of these shadows and sell them as singles. And again, all you need is packaging. You don't even have to change the manufacturing because you can do it in the exact same pants. Okay, okay, okay. Business Jesse here to play. Sometimes I just start saying things and they make no sense. It's like in the office, Michael Scott saying, you know, the second it came out of my mouth, I knew it was wrong. <laughs> Actually, I was gonna go in with a liner, but, but I wanna try this black shadow as a liner. So I'm gonna use this kind of like flat, really dense brush and get some on here and just, I don't know, do something different, baby. That looks nice. It's a really, I mean, it's definitely a black shadow but it gives like a nice little bit of definition on the lash. 
They also have that deep brown you could use if you'd prefer that. I have the Sea Shanty like TikTok thing. I'll link it below if you haven't seen it uh, stuck in my head. And I have for like weeks, you guys. Somebody please send help. So I'm gonna finish getting ready really quickly and then we're gonna kind of talk through these and which ones I think right off the bat you might actually want to go out and buy if you're in need of something and which ones maybe I would wait on. By the way, I am throwing on some powder. Stay tuned because this is the new L'Oreal Infallible foundation in a powder. I am a powder foundation junkie. I have been for years. It's one of my favorite things because it's so easy to slap on on top of something that has a little bit less coverage to add coverage to kind of soak up a little oil, but it still looks nice and oh, I love them. Another product I'm using right now is this Physicians Formula New Bronzer, their Matte Minoy. I did a video like you're seeing today, but for Physicians Formula, oh, <laughs> I say it like that but for Physicians Formula, and it, I discovered a lot of new favorites in that too, so I can link that video below if you wanna watch it after this one. I also did an e.l.f. one. Okay, Jessica, we get it, you have other videos. <laughs> but this is the e.l.f. putty blush, and I did an e.l.f. video too. <laughs> okay, I'm done, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And what I like about the putty blush is it works on top of powder. Like, I am totally tapping this on top of that powder foundation, and it totally works. And I'm just tossing on the Maybelline Lifter Gloss in Moon. One of my absolute favorite glosses. It's so, And this shade is just so pretty. So really looking at everything we tried today, the thing I was the most unexcited about is the Brow Sessive Brow Gel. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I will probably put this in my vanity and use it and use it up, but I don't think it's like the best brow gel I've ever used. However, it doesn't feel too like crunchy or anything, which is nice, but yeah, just kind of underwhelmed. The products I'm the most excited about, which is a lot of them, I am super relieved and excited that these eyeshadows are good. After I'd read some people's comments, I was so worried these would be awful, and at least these ones I've tried here are absolutely stunning. They catch the light just as beautifully as like my expensive Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadows that I love and use all the time. They catch the light in the same way. They blended just as easily. I just am thrilled by these. I am so excited about this concealer. I just think it was so easy to blend. It's easy to work with. It brightens and covers as much as I personally need. And again, you could always add on more if you wanted super high coverage. So if you're curious, I use the shade Light Beige. So I'm really excited to throw this in my bathroom to use every day. And of course the tinted hydrator, it looks so pretty. So, you know, keeping in mind, I threw a little powder on it cause I did feel like it needed to be powdered down a tiny bit, but I just feel like it made my skin look youthful and healthy and glowy and I'm really enjoying it. it has the level of coverage I like maybe slightly under, but it's, like I said, it's so slight. The Impossible Primer I like, but I don't think this is ever gonna be a go-to for me. It is an enjoyable experience. It feels good going on the skin. I'm not so sure how much of a difference it made in like how this makeup will wear, but on top of that, it definitely did not mattify as it said it did. So it feels good to put on, but it may be one of those things that is that extra step really worth it? Because if you're needing mattification, I would reach for any other mattifying primer, not this. And I think that's everything, yeah? So I am over the moon. I just feel like the drugstore right now is hitting so many launches out of the park. It's it's almost overwhelming, but for me, so exciting <laughs> because I've always loved the drugstore and I've just been vibing on it, man. Like, I'm just so excited about so many new things. So if you wanna check out some of my other videos, of course, that I mentioned ad nauseum earlier, I will have all of those linked below as well as up in that little eye up there in the cards for you to watch now if you would like to binge some of them. And I, of course, hope you'll subscribe and stick around. I do videos like this multiple times a month, and then I do plenty of other makeup videos, but I also do lifestyle videos, vlogs, Target try-on hauls, things like that. I hope that you subscribe, we'd love to have you, and I will see you guys in my next one.